Welcome back guys to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to be doing something a bit different and I've been requested a few times by some of my uh, viewers that how I do my um, motion blur swipe transitions uh, yeah that's I guess what it's called I, I don't think it has like a real um, like proper name uh, but what it does is like there is a transition from the right to the left with a bit of a motion blur and uh, this transition is the one you're going to see right now all right so now that you've seen what that transition was um, i'm going to show you exactly how to do it so let me just import a few video strips so that i can transition between the two of them all right so i have imported two video clips one this one and the other one this one with good contrast between the two of them so you can understand the transition a bit better so how do we actually do this first uh, you should actually set it uh, this frame rate to whatever frames uh, the video is and uh, the usual settings of the resolution and everything like that so I'm not going to go into detail over there but the first thing you really need to do is find out where the first strip is starting say it starts here then say it starts here there it starts from there and you want this clip to be overlapping with this clip then what you want to do is select it by right clicking grab and pull it over the first clip now I usually use a 10 frame uh, transition meaning that there are 10 frames out of the 30 frames that it takes to be a second uh, so this as you can see it shows two numbers one showing 88 and then one another one which is changing which is the one on the top which is this this number which is from where the second strip is gonna start so what we want to do is put okay <laughs> okay select that and what we want to do is just put a 10 frame uh, overlap between them so we want 78 right so there we go that should give you a 10 frame gap in between the two of them and now what you want to do is select the top strip and press shift a and you should see this select FX strip transform and you should see something like that select the transform slip and make it overdrop on the properties right here if you don't see the properties and it's like that for you then you can hit N and that will show you the properties now press shift A again and select Gaussian blur and select overdrop again in the same way that you did for the transition transform slip strip that's what I meant to say okay so next what you want to do is come over to the beginning of the transition and a really easy way to do that is just to hit page up and that will take you to exactly where it starts and what you want to do is just select the transforms strip and go down here in the properties to where it says position X and what you want to do is select 100 for X like that and you saw it switch to the one beneath it and then click I on the keyboard when your cursor is above the X over here and it should turn yellow which means that you have inserted a keyframe now what you want to do is bring your cursor back over here and press um, page up which will take you to the end of the transition that is where the first strip actually ends and what you want to do is select transform again and change this back to zero so it comes back into the view and click I on the keyboard again to insert a keyframe and now you will notice something when we play it back which is it swipes through and since this is not uh, cached in really quite yet you won't be able to see it as smooth as it actually gonna be but you can see it frame by frame just like that it's a simple wipe transition but this is not actually what we want and we want the motion blur which is where the Gaussian blur comes in select the Gaussian blur by right clicking and come down to where it says size X select that and make it 150 remember you need to be on the beginning of the transition again so hit page down and get there and select 150 over here in size X and hit I just like you did for the transform strip and then skip over to the end of the transition again and make this say 50 and hit I again so that it turns yellow and then by pressing the arrow key on your keyboard the right arrow key go ahead by one frame that you can see here we are on 89 now we move to 90 and this will turn green again so you want to make it zero so that there is no more blur and hit I again and you should see it kind of have a motion blur effect to it which is really cool in my opinion 
All right, so now what you want to do is it, you're pretty much over with the transition, so you won't be able to see it really well, uh, but I will preview that whole thing for you in just a second. Uh, but what you want to do is give a sort of a say sound effect, which I actually use, which is the swoosh sound effect. So you can download that from the description. I will provide the link to the one that I use. But um, I'm just going to import that straight away by going and hitting Shift A, which brings up this menu, and clicking on Sound. And you just want to find where that sound is. So there we go. Here is the Swoosh Sound Bible thingy. And hit Add Sound. And you should see it come below the video strips. We don't want that. I always like to put it a bit above. So select the audio strip, press G to grab it and hit Y so that you restrict it only in the Y direction. So you can, no matter where you pull it, it's going to go only in the vertical direction. And where did you go? Okay, there. And bring it down to right at the top of the two things. And let's try it out. And now you can uh, really hear it properly, but I'll, as I said, I'll preview it for you in just a few uh, seconds from now. And that is pretty much how you do it. But another additional thing that I think is really quite useful, ex especially if you have very large projects, and this is a major tip, is go to the end of the transition, which is here, select this strip, and cut it by pressing K. And as you see that it will cut the Gaussian blur and transform thing as well but that will not change the transition because the only transition part is this part and how this helps is actually by decreasing the amount of uh, encoding time and rendering time and select the cut strip on the right hit G and Y and pull it down and what this helps you to do is just keep all the video strips in one um, channel so that you can easily edit it later because otherwise you'd be having like stair kind of things in different channels each time you have one of these transitions and that is pretty much how you do it so I will just render out this small portion of the clip and show you externally right now I have refreshed the sequencer and got everything cached up so you can see it much better over here so here we go there that is the transition which I think looks really very cool and it'll keep playing just like that. And the sound effect really adds a new dimension to it. So that is pretty cool as well. There. But one more thing which is really quite important is to do with the frame rate. Now as you can see here, I have my frame rate at 30 FPS. So in 30 FPS, um, I usually have a 10 frame um, transition. So 78 here and 88 there. But if you are using, say, a 60 FPS video, then you'd want exactly double of that to have the same amount of time. So you'd want a 20 uh, frame transition. And usually in the range of uh, one third of a second or one fourth of a second is usually good for these swipe transitions, which I think is just apt uh, for the fluidity and being able to actually see the transition. Yeah, that is everything that I wanted to say about this. I may make a tutorial series on Blender, maybe in the future if you guys re request it enough. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it to be useful. And I hope you use this transition more and more in your videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.